Hi, I'm Jeff Yarger. I'm a professor of chemistry, biochemistry, and physics. And this video is going to be looking at a discussion question in chapter three of Physical Chemistry for the Life Sciences, edition number two. And um, specifically, we'll have uh, further information on biopchem.education, or of course, you can look up uh, stuff in the textbook directly. And this discussion question, which is in the chapter on phase equilibria, is asking about a specific uh, figure that you can find in the textbook, which shows the denaturization of a protein going from a folded state, it's specifically a helical structure, to a random coil or an unfolded state. Uh, um, and it's looking at it uh, the fraction of unfolded protein uh, versus a specific temperature. And this is uh, figure 3.16 in Adkins' book. And it's specifically asking, if you look at the shape of this curve, so this kind of S-shaped curve here, um, it's saying, if you look at that and you, ch uh, uh, you change uh, the degree of cooperativity with denaturization, would you expect it to increase or decrease um, for a constant value of the melting temperature? Um, so, so basically, cooperativity in this sense, meaning, you know, how uh, does this protein unfold? Does it do so system where all the things react together kind of with each other or does it happen kind of you know a less cooperative like in parts where you would have something like maybe a molten globule state and i like this because it's uh, it's making sure we uh, understand the concepts more than some exact specific working of a problem uh, and it's doing it of a, a very important biological system. In fact, you could say this type of melting curve transition you see in nucleic acids as well as amino acids like protein, et cetera. So let's look specifically at um, this one in general, which is if we increase the cooperativity and made it, in a sense, the limit of uh, increased cooperativity is a true melting transition or a true first order phase transition. For example, the most classic thing we can think of melting, which is uh, if you said, um, you know, the fraction, you know, instead of unfolded uh, protein, uh, if we said the fraction of water and we looked at the temperature, and this was zero degrees Celsius. So below that, the fraction's gonna be zero, and then at zero degrees, we're gonna go systematically at that temperature to something that is a fraction of one or 100%, um, like this. And then that is a completely discontinuous transition where this is changing from ice to water. And the less cooperative you get, as you decrease cooperativity, this kind of smears out more and more. And so that answers the question of if you increase the cooperativity, you increase the sharpness or the degree of cooperativity, well, if you decrease the degree of cooperativity, then this sharpness it decreases and it gets broader and broader of a transition. And so when we're looking at this specifically for proteins, this isn't uh, a protein undergoing denaturization or unfolding is not a first order phase transition. Uh, and the degree of cooperativity um, can vary quite a lot. In other words, you can smear this transition out, you know, to quite an extent. Now, looking at this, and the reason it is often called, you know, melting is because while it's not completely discontinuous like this, 
it is often very sharp. And a lot of these are not only in proteins, but like we said, in, in nucleic acids, you can get this as well as amino acids. You can get this type of melting behavior. Um, and it, while it's not a true first order phase transition melting, it has many similarities to it. And then also studying this as you kind of move to uh, transitions that move away from this kind of first order discontinuity uh, in a variable to ones that are more continuous, second order phase transitions, glass transition temperatures, uh, et cetera, uh, that also have um, kinetic factors associated with them. This really gets us to the heart of what I would say practical and uh, phase transitions and realistic phase transitions that happen in a lot of biological systems. So this is given as an example as well as uh, a figure in your book and there's uh, not only this discussion question but also some exercise uh, problems associated with this in the book as well. So hopefully this gives you uh, a first way of looking at this, um, not only describing it in the book, but there's, the book gives several resources and there are numerous uh, papers, dedicated books on protein unfolding, and it really still remains one of the um, heavily researched and important topics in biochemistry. Thank you.